everybody. Welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and this is the final part of Chapter 6. Okay? It was a long run, I know. There was a lot that you had to learn in this chapter. There was a whole bunch of new things and new concepts, and it usually feels a little overwhelming. But I promise you, after you're done with this video, and then you do the last problem set with me, you're going to have a good foundation. You're not going to have mastery, so don't think that that's what's going to happen. What Right now, my goal is to give you this whole chapter, lay it out, have you eat up most of the hard part uh, concepts, and start to think about these ideas. After this, we're going to do a problem-solving video, old, you know, the workshop problems, and we're also going to do some lecture-related problems, and then you're going to have mastery, okay? So if you feel a little overwhelmed, it's fine. You, this is expected, okay? There's a lot in this chapter, but just bear with me. Go along with the program, and you'll see by the time we're done with the workshops and the old uh, and the lecture problems, you're going to see that now it all makes sense. So if you happen to notice questions that you don't know how to answer yet, and we're done with the chapter, it's not that you, you, you're missing something. It's just that I, I take a two-step approach. First, I give you all the philosophy, and you cover the, the most important details. Then, through problem-solving workshops or um, lecture problems, then you get mastery, okay? Because then I'm going to add little details that is not nice to add until you at least have a foundation to work from. All right? So don't worry. You're doing good. Keep it up. This is the last part right now. Okay, so now let's look at the summary chart. We're going to have actually two summary charts to look at. This is the first one, which you already started looking at uh, from SN1 and SN2. So this is organized by the different aspects of priority. So alkyl halide is always your first priority. I mean, the alkyl group, then the leaving group, the nucleophile, the solvent, and so on. So you work down. Stereo is not really a part of that. But if you're looking to do comparisons between molecules, this is you first look at the alkyl group. And that's going to help you decide in some way whether it's SN1, SN2, E1, E2. And then you kind of work through the list, and I'll show you how to use it in just a moment. But in summary, we already looked at SN1 and SN2 in the previous video. For E1, it's the same idea as SN1. Notice how they're the same tertiary. Never methyl, never primary. Um, for leaving group, it's all the same for everybody. And notice how for SM1, it's a weak nucleophile. But for E1, it's a poor or weak base. But notice the list is exactly the same, right? Water, alcohol, ammonia, same thing here, right? So those are things that are considered weak because they're neutral. All right. The polar protic solvent for SM1, polar protic solvent for, for E1. And as far as the stereochem, here it's racemic. You get 50-50 RNS or cis and trans. Here, there's no coplanar requirement, and Zaitsev is always the major product. So that's your E1, and I showed you in contrast to SM1. They go together. You'll see that in the next chart. Okay, E2, it doesn't work with SN2 up here. For the alkyl group, it actually works similar to SM1 and E1, okay? They're kind of similar. For E2 tertiary is favored over primary or secondary. Now, for E2, primary only happens, let's write this down, right over here, only with beta branching. Remember that? So with beta branching, primary works. Never methyl and never vinyl for this chapter, vinyl in particular. But as far as um, methyl, never because there's no beta carbon. So E2 primary works only if beta branching, and we'll see that actually in the next. The reason why it's not listed here, you're going to see it in the next card that we use. Okay, as far as the base, strong base. So everything's negative. That's the first thing you should note. Everything's negative. And remember, it's at the bottom of our pK chart. So O minus, N minus, H minus, carbon minus. With O, do not, it's not carboxyl group. That's not considered a strong base. But otherwise, RO minus, HO minus, good to go. All right, N, always minus, good base. H, very powerful base, but even better is carbon, like an alkane, a sp3 carbon that's negative. Very powerful bases. All right, so that's what we're seeing here in our list. Polar aprotic, just like SN2. Uh, SN2 has only inversion, so if you have R, you get S. If you have cis, you only get trans at the end. Whereas E2, you have a different requirement. It's called the coperiplanar requirement, or the anti-periplanar requirement, and that's that right there, coplanar or anti, uh, um, anti-coplanar or anti-periplanar, same thing. That means that they're opposite of each other. 
and diaxial, very important for ring systems. I know you know this now after watching the problem solving video, uh, but you remember they have to be opposite on the ring or you can't do it. Diaxial. Okay. Now the next chart, this one is the most important when, so the, the chart I just showed you is used when you want to think about one type of pathway in all of its favorite things. Right? So if you know you're looking at E2, you could look through that to figure out what makes one better than another. This chart tells you in a reaction what most likely is going to happen. That's what this chart's about. Okay? Now, the first thing I want to point out is when it's methyl, it can only be SN2. So if you have a methyl bromide, by the way, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the alkyl group. That's always the first thing you do. So this right here, these are my alkyl groups, methyl, primary, secondary, tertiary. And then I'm figuring out from there whether it's SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. Okay, that's what we're doing. So if it's a methyl bromide, methyl chloride, methyl something, then it's only going to be SN2. Very simple. Never E1, never E2, never uh, SN1. Okay, never. So if it's primary, it's SN2 almost always unless there's a bulky base, that's number one, or beta branching. Make sure that's in there, beta branching. So if you have beta branching, then it's going to be E2. The bulky base concept, it really depends upon, see this is a general idea. If you have a primary and it's got a long carbon chain, then bulky branching is important. Um, then the bulky base is going to wind up causing elimination because it's too hard to get in. So the bulky base concept really applies if you have a, a, a primary carbon that has a halogen and the next door neighbor is more than just one carbon. Okay, so, but I put it here because this is consistent with um, most systems are more than just one neighbor carbon. Most systems are larger than two carbons. So that's why the bulky ba base works here. Okay, so if it's bulky base or beta branching, then it's E2. That's the point of unless. So remember, we're in the SN2, E2 category, and it's either always SN2 unless it's a bulky base or it has beta branching. That's what I'm saying here. Okay. Now, look at tertiary. Skip secondary. For tertiary, it could never, ever be SN2. So, if you have a strong base, meaning a negative base, then it's E2 only. That's what I wrote here. It's not going to be SN1 or E1. Never. So, if you have O minus, N minus, H minus, C minus with a tertiary alkyl halide, it is always E2. Okay? That's the major product. But if it's not a strong base, if it's neutral, water, alcohol, ammonia, if it's neutral, then it's SM1 and E1 equal, 50-50. That's what I wrote here. So you actually get both of them. Here's the thing. Whenever you have an increase in temperature, that means that E is favored. Okay? So increase in temperature, E is favored. Decrease temperature, S is favored. SM1, SN2, it depends upon the condition. E1, E2, it depends on the condition. So if you have a tertiary alkyl halide with high temperature and it's water, for example, it would be E1 as the major product, okay? But the high temperature's got to be there. They have to write high temp or something, okay? Now, another thing to point out, all reactions favor an increase in temperature. So they all like high temperature, but the higher you go, meaning SN1, SN2, E1, E2, they all like higher temperature. But as you go higher, E becomes more of the major product, okay? But they all want somewhat of a high temperature. In other words, you can't do it under cold conditions because then SN2 and SN1 are kind of slow themselves. So you want to have some temperature. But as you raise that temperature, elimination starts to become the major characteristic, major reaction. Okay? That's what I'm saying here. As far as secondary goes, that's the hard one, right? That's where everybody can do it. They could all react. Well, it's very simple. First thing you do when you're thinking about a secondary alkyl halide is you look over the arrow or you look at the nucleophile base and you ask, is it strong or weak? Is it neutral or is it negative? If the base or nucleophile is neutral and it's secondary alkyl halide, then it's definitely...